How can someone reject what you've already approved? I think sometimes we miss the fact that the only way someone's rejection hurts is if on some level I agree. Right? I, when I stand ten toes down in who I am and everything that you love about yourself, somebody else can walk in and say, mm, not my cup of tea. You could be, you could be shorter. You could be, you could be, you know, bigger. You could be smaller. You could be lighter. You could be darker. Yeah. Everybody has an opinion on who they think you should be. But when I've accepted everything that I am, I say, oh, well, thank you for your, your unsolicited opinion. Enjoy the rest of your day. I got two words for you. Everybody, welcome to Hello Hubby. I am so excited again that you have chosen to join me here. So, Latera said I had to make this part very concise. So here's the deal: no situationships. Subscribe, get the alert. You like that, Latera's? Okay, now I'm doing the way I want to. Hey, um, please commit to me. I think we're on something. We're journaling to a place together and I think that this is good we have something good happening here and I would love for you to subscribe and hit the alert thingy okay all right so listen last week we had uh Dr. Sheila Little and this this week I thought that it was very befitting to continue on that journey of bringing a specialist in that can help us continue in this process of healing and, and define some terms um, and define where we are and where we should be positioning our mind to continue to, to progress to. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Dr. Brittany Noel. Well, hello, ma'am. How, How are, are you? How you doing? I'm wonderful. I'm Listen, and I'm not a doctor. I appreciate. I'm going to go I, with I, that. I appreciate Dr. the highest. Dr. Brittany esteem. Noel. <laughs> we'll stay there. Just, 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 just run hey, with Hey, if it. Dr. Phil can do it, I can do it. That's so what I'm saying. Do it. <laughs> okay, okay. Hi. Hello, ma'am. Please introduce yourself to everyone. Yes, I am Brittany Noel. I'm a therapist out of Houston, Texas. Um, also a mindset and confidence coach as well. Um, I've been practicing since 2014, and I specialize in helping women and men master the, the different life transitions that they go through. So if it's, you know, getting married, getting a divorce, moving out of state, adding to your family, going through grief, um, trying to walk into the fullness of who you are. That's my passion is teaching women how to own everything that you are, become transparent and show up fully, wholly you unapologetically. I love this. All right, so I am on my journey, mm -hmm. and I am happy to be here. Good. I'm happy to be on this journey. And Hello Hubby is all about me and other women like me that can kind of mm -hmm. pull from my real stuff and see what fits and what don't fit. And I wanted you and what you specialize in to help us yes. continue and even start the healing process. So here's where I'm at, right? I've 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 started the self love. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm feeling me. Mm -hmm. I think As I'm you should. Dope. I think I'm dope. I I don't know what it happened, but some click, and I'm all right with that. Mm -hmm. Right. I have learned to recognize my triggers. Mm -hmm. What makes me say. You're going to make me upset if I stick around. I'm going to go ahead and move around. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Here's where I'm not at. I'm not at the place, not yet. I'm I'm at the window where I don't have the anxieties mm -hmm. that cannot be seen, mm -hmm. that are preventing my, my legs to move where I want it to go. So I want a husband but I have anxiety about the thought. And so it's causing me to keep things at bay. You know, like, 
I don't want to say it's too good to be true, but like you're just a part of my learning process. Mm. I kind of have every situation now. It this is just a learning tool God is going to use, and so that's it. Mm. And so I'm going to give what I'm supposed to give to this, so that it can give me what I need from it, so it can move along. Mm. And and I'm saying that from a pure heart. Not like anal, like, no, I'm going to show love and kindness, but you're probably just another test or another pain or another lesson that I need to pass as opposed to being like, all right, this is it. You know, yeah. how should I be in this space? What I hear you saying is you're trying to manage your disappointment. Yes. So if I tell myself that this thing that I am enjoying is not significant, it is not my forever, then I will not be disappointed when it doesn't last forever. Yes, 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 yes. yes. But what happens is I also make sure that it doesn't last forever. Yes. Right? What you're doing is a protective behavior, right? So instead of getting myself worked up by this thing that looks good and feels good, you're not really learning the full lesson. Because the full lesson, when you talk about marriage and partnership, at some point, whoever you're married to, he's going to hurt you. He's going to disappoint you. Why? Because he's human. So the goal is to not protect myself from disappointment. The goal is to learn how do I respond to disappointment when relationships break down? And who do I want to be when relationships break down? Hmm. My issue has been I don't have a problem mm -hmm. knowing how to navigate that space. It's the person not seeing value enough in me to stick around mm -hmm. or to to move sol solution based as opposed to I want to be right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hurt your feelings and make you feel like a horrible person, even if they're wrong. To have that like mindedness of solution of like, no, we're going to have this discussion because we've reached a place. This isn't good. So let's fix this. My mind goes there. Like, I don't want the problem. Let's fix this. What's the problem? Let's just mm -hmm. talk about it. It's on the other end where I want to micromanage. But I don't know if you could. Will you be solution based or will you make me the problem? And then I go into this mindset of, wow, it's happening again. Mm -hmm. I'm, you're a narcissist or I start going into this space of this is abuse mm -hmm. and here I'm stuck again mm -hmm. you know the fear of the of repeating the cycle mm -hmm. that I know I don't want that I know I'm paying attention to but like in the previous episode where what I don't want I'm thinking about it so much that I'm Mm -hmm. I'm telling it to come to me. So I've been trying, you know, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Help me that. So it sounds like you're, you are very focused on what you don't want, that you're creating the thing that you don't want. Mm. Have you spent time identifying what you do want? <clears throat> I have, mm -hmm. I have, mm -hmm. I've spent a lot of alone time. Mm -hmm. And the moment that I'm around what I do want, I, I get so clammy and like nervous and like <sighs> that I don't know what to do and so I like I run away mm -hmm. have you identified the woman you want to be when you receive what you want yes mm -hmm. and then that intimidates me too mm -hmm. that that woman that I want to be I don't she's not unrealistic I haven't put it too high but I just think that what if it takes more time than you have for me to be her? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it, it, mom, you know, doc, come on. Take so, because I, I, what I hear is it's, it's like when I go to the gym mm -hmm. and I'm like, I could really get on this treadmill and go hard for 45 minutes. But what if when I get off, I don't have abs? Right. What are the odds of me getting off that treadmill and having abs? 
For 45 minutes, you're going to have to really... A good 45. You're going to have to put that mug on 15. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to have to be running like flat. It's not likely, right? It's not likely. What are the odds of me getting abs when I don't get on the treadmill? It's not going to happen. Which behavior gets me closer to the abs? The treadmill. Right? See where you're going with this. There's not going to be an immediate gratification for showing up how I want to show up in that moment. And this is why people don't do it. Because if I had an immediate payoff, if I knew that being vulnerable with this person was going to get me what I wanted, I would do it. Mm. If I knew that showing up transparent was going to get me the the validation that I needed, I would do it. Mm. There's always going to be fear around making the new making the change and doing the new behavior associated with the woman I want to become. This is why I said, do you have a clear picture of who she is? Because when I know who she is every day now, I'm making small decisions to be more and more like her. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in the presence of the thing that I won't even say giving you anxiety, when I'm in the presence of something that I want, I call it excitement. I'm excited about what this new beginning could be. I'm excited about what this new person can bring into my life. Not even that they're going to be here forever, but I'm excited for the new experience and what this person is going to bring out of me. I'm shaping my expectation around what I want instead of focusing on what I've been through. Yeah. So when you're interacting with this person, you're going to have to start ch- checking your thoughts and really asking yourself, Am I giving this person, am I giving this this opportunity a chance to be the thing that I want it to be so that I can experience how I want to experience instead of re-traumatizing myself by what I've already experienced? Re-traumatizing myself by what I've already experienced. Mm-hmm. I have been, <clears throat> I've been conflicted mm-hmm. because a part of me, it's like a war. The Bible says there's a war happening in our members, but there's like this war where this Jessica that I am, I'm walking into, she's strong, she loud, she takes up for it. She like, no, we're doing this. This is a great thing. You're doing an awesome job. I'm very proud of you. Get it done. Mm-hmm. And now the voice that used to be loud, it's faint, but I can still hear it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it only says one thing, but are you sure? Mm-hmm. And that hair of doubt is what make me say, no, right? Mm-hmm. It's like getting, posting a picture and you get a hundred good comments and one person say, are you pregnant? <laughs> and you're like, are you serious? I've literally been working out like the past mm-hmm. year, eating nothing but one rice a day. And it's that one comment that'll make mm-hmm. you want to respond even if you don't. Right. So I have this, it's very faint now. Mm-hmm. My new voice is loud. But that one, it's back there. It's like, are you sure? And what if you answered the voice with, no, I'm not sure. But I'm still going to show up. Because moving into this new version of you requires not trust in what the outcome will be. Trust in who I will be and trust in the process that God has put me through. Walking forward in my life is not that I am 100% in control of what the outcome will be because you are never in control. This is true. But I do know that based on the, the process that I'm going through, based on the changes that I've made, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to get hurt again at some point. But what I'm sure about is that I'm not going to be that girl again that I'm not going to respond the way I responded in the past, that I'm not going to lose my voice the way I lost in the past. I'm not sure of the outcome. This may or may not be the person, but what I am sure about is me. And that's where you have to find your trust in. I I am love developing that. trust in who I've become I because that. of the process, not what I think this person is going to be in my life. I love that. You're so great, you know. <laughs> Oh man! Hey, hey, you all right? <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, let me say that back. Mm-hmm. So basically, it's me. Mm-hmm. I am sure, and I mean this, Doc. I'm sure I am not gonna respond how I used to. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be her. I'm not gonna take what I took, and she shows up all day. When I take when I 
speak up for myself about certain stuff that I know I used to be like, I'm just going to let that slide. Mm-hmm. I, I walk in her and I practice her every day. Absolutely. I have not practiced her in relationship mm-hmm. again, but I'm utilizing her throughout my life. So she's strong, and I think that is what is creating this mm-hmm. anxiety because I I want to know that she'll stand up mm-hmm. in that space because she's been showing up. I'll be mm-hmm. like, you, I don't like how you talk to me. Yeah. And normally I would be like, whatever, to anybody. Yeah. I'll be like, hey, I don't know what this is you got going on. Either check it or I'm going to move around. Yeah. And I don't be talking like that, but I do now. But now in this space, dog, I... What I will tell you is when you talk about developing a real relationship with yourself and falling in love with you, there is a level of self-betrayal that is very hard to fall back into. When I reached a point in my own journey where I was able to say, Brittany, I love you flaws and all. I love you on your best days. I love you on your worst days. You do not have it all together, yet I still think you are that girl. When I fell in love with me, good, bad, and ugly, It allowed me to be 100% honest and transparent with myself to say I'm moving into these new areas and I'm not sure. I don't know if it'll work out. I don't know if I have enough. I don't know if I'm competent, but I'm going for what it is that my heart desires because that's what I say I deserve. Now, the way that that translates into relationships is that you will find yourself in moments where the moment calls for you to pick your higher self or your lower self. And what saves you is the growth that you have learned in being able to love yourself fully without condemning yourself. I remember there was a time when I knew myself. I Listen, when I tell you, I patted myself on the back where I found myself in a situation with a young man. And um, we're kissing and I'm like, oh, my gosh, is it going to go there? Right. And this person obviously wanted it to go there. And immediately I felt like a kick in my gut that said, this man has not sacrificed anything for you. What are you doing? And I said, "Mm, let me get my purse. I got to go. I have to go because the level of relationship I've developed with myself will Mm -hmm. not allow me to sacrifice myself for you. And you have not paid enough in to what I have built to have access to this part of me. Mm. You become self-protective of yourself in a way that one, no one ever taught you how to be. And you learn how to be for yourself what other people were not for you unapologetically. And you'll find yourself in those moments where you realize I can trust me. I can trust myself to make the right decisions. I can trust myself to pick the right partners. I can even trust myself to really like somebody and still say, you're not the one. Love it. And <clears throat> I've done this. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this guy. And uh, he was all right. Huh? Mm-hmm. He was all right. I liked him. But he wasn't mine. He wasn't my guy. Right. And I told him. Now, he ended up not taking that well. <laughs> So he like, he like, they don't saying, take it well. Not, they don't always take it well. You, know, you don't stuff. control that. Yeah, yeah. And he was saying some stuff, and I was like, I started laughing. And normally I would have took it personal and like been hurt. I started laughing. I said, You don't believe what you said. You just finished giving me a whole bunch of compliments. You're hurt. It's okay. You'll thank me later when you find your, life, your wife. I'm not hurt. So it's all good. But then, watch this though. So I met this guy that I actually like. And actually, like, he could be petrified. I'm mm-hmm. like, no, nah, I'm out. I ended it. But it, I ended it because it could have actually been. Like, I mm-hmm. like, I was like, um, so, yeah, this is where I'm, I'm out. I, like, found an era. Mm-hmm. He loves Jesus. He, I, like, I found an era. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, yeah, this ain't going to work mm-hmm. because, you know, this. And it wasn't a thing. It was not a thing. And we still communicate. And I don't know where it's going to go. But the truth of the matter is, it makes me, like, feel unprepared mm-hmm. 
But outside of it, I'm so ready. Mm -hmm. Outside of that space, I feel so in shape, so trained, so like, man, put me in the game. Mm -hmm. Like like my confidence level, my esteem, my self-love, you should see me outside Mm -hmm. of that space. I am like... It ooze off of me. Yeah. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I know who I am. I know what where I deserve to be. But then outside of that space, I don't have to be naked. Mm-hmm. Only in relationship do I have to become vulnerable enough to show my heart to someone yes. and hope you don't reject it. This is true. Right? So the, the, the great part about growth is that many of the skills that you learn in being able to be a better mother or be a better... Um, daughter or a better friend, those skills are transferable in our love relationships. The difference is that the risk is higher. Okay, so it's like when we go to Vegas, I'm gonna pay them them penny slots all day. But when you can't put me on no crap tables, because I'm like, I don't know, I like my mm-hmm. money, I don't want to lose it, right? Mm-hmm. The risk is higher, right? You're going to have to accept that one, everything great that I want in my life is going to have to come at a great risk. The risk is I can move into this thing and it works out well, or it doesn't work out well. That's that risk is associated to anything I want to build in my life. In the same way you've taken those risks in your career and you've done it fearlessly and you've done it leaning on faith and you've done it believing what God says that transfers into your love life as well. But here in this space, I have to be willing to lean into vulnerability and transparency. You don't have to jump into the pool. We can put our toes in. We can inch our way in. But we got to go forward. In many relationships, I tell people that as you are healing and as you are growing, there's going to be a lot of relationships that you go through that are pointing out the areas in which you have to grow in order to be a healthy person to love. Yeah. And this situation is pointing out, this is where you learn transparency. This is where you learn learn vulnerability. Whether or not he is your forever or not, that's actually not the question. The question is, God, how do I use this person that you've put in my life to learn how to be okay with sharing my heart again? Because that is a part of the healing process. God does not build us up and heal us all over again for him to sit us in a corner and say, now play by yourself. That's not how he operates. So if, if it's his goal for us to live in connection, for us to live into you in unity, for us to live and build generations, I have to know how to connect with a, another human being when I'm not in control. I can't control them. The outcome is unpredictable and the risk is high. This is where I learn how to ask for reassurance. This is where I learn how to say, hey, that right there is actually one of my soft spots. Can you be delicate with me? Hey, I'm giving you a piece of my heart. Now I need to watch and see, can you hold it responsibly? And do all of that without falling apart. This is the other part that I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in healing and I'm good and I'm wonderful, but I tell people all the time, God did not heal you for you to be by yourself, whether it's in whether it's in a romantic relationship or if it's building a community in some way, shape, form or fashion. We don't live in isolation. And, and as a woman, our desire is to love and be loved. And so that means I have to learn how to let down the walls that I have built out of protection. And when I have found a man who is worthy Okay, now each one of us will have a different definition of what worthy is and what it looks like. You have to know for you what is worthy to me. How do I define worthy so that I know exactly what am I measuring this man up against? I think sometimes we are afraid to go back into romantic connections because you don't even know what criteria makes him worthy of your heart. You don't know what criteria makes him worthy to have access to you. You're just hoping. Right. You just you got a blind over your eyes and you just throwing a dart, hoping you hit something. But I have to define for myself what makes someone worthy of my space, my time, my attention, my love, my affection. 
so that as these people are coming into my life, I can look at each connection and determine, make an intellectual decision, not an emotional decision. I can make an intellectual decision to decide, is this person a good fit for me? Hmm. Because sometimes we can be stressing ourselves out about whether or not we're taking something to the le- to the next level and he didn't meet the basic criteria. Does that make sense? That makes all the sense. I am um, <clears throat> when I think about um current situation mm-hmm. and the state of my heart as soft as I've become, I've become hard. Mm-hmm. Um As more loving as I've become, I've become more, no, you can't get that. You know, and the part of me that makes me beautiful is my gift of love. Mm. And now my gift has, it has strings on it that I put. Mm -hmm. I tied them. I, I hooked them up. And I say, just in case, don't go this far. And I'll I'll be going full speed, but I hooked my own self up just for for preventive measures so that I don't. (laughs) And now it's preventing me Mm -hmm. from entering into this space without fear. Yeah. You know, and I'm I want to cut them. I want to cut them, but what you've helped me understand is I can cut them because the whole point is me. I can cut them because I ain't trying to control him exactly, or control how he accepts it. Mm-hmm. But me in it, who are you? What do you want? Does this work for you? You don't focus. Is this working for you? Mm-hmm. Is this what you want? Right. Is this serving you? This isn't. It's so good. And see, I also, I don't believe that we don't fall in love. When people say, "Oh, I just fell in love," I don't believe it. As a woman who has fell, fall, fallen hard in love, <laughs> and came out of that, as I go into connections now from a healed space, I realize that. My love is a decision. It is. And that when I am connected with someone, we always have, if you are truly, I will say emotionally intelligent, but in tune with yourself, you know when that heart is turning. You know when you're getting lost in this person. You know when those emotions are ramping up. It's my responsibility to say, okay, Brittany, I see you getting wrapped up and it feels good. I know you like it. But let's qualify this first. This is so good. I, ha- I, it is not his, pro- it is not his responsibility to protect my heart. That, that's on me. And one of the things that we do is sometimes we fall in love without their consent. And I am very big and sit- sitting down and having the conversation to say, hey, look, you know, my feelings for you are growing. I'm liking you, I'm enjoying this, and I want this to grow, but I need to know if I'm at this edge of this cliff where I'm really, I'm ready to jump over, I'm ready to fall, are you falling with me? Do you desire to fall with me? Because if you're ready to go, I'm ready to go. Let's, we at Vegas, we're going to play the high slots, I'm going to put my money in on it, I'm ready, but I need to know, are you going with me? Oh. And not do you just desire, but are you willing? Because if I jump off this cliff, we're going to be hand in hand. Hmm. You would be shocked at how many people say, no, I'm not ready to jump off this cliff with you. And that's when we, hey, thank you for your honesty. This is where I back off the cliff because I'm not jumping by myself. I love this. So... Excuse me. So the thing that comes to my mind, right, mm-hmm. is um, because of my nature and my process of how I fall, mm-hmm. it's different than other people. <laughs> so when I hear you say that, I'm like, oh, shoot, just good. 
I think you need to raise your standard first off because <laughs> you clearly be falling quick. And that ain't going to be fair to no man because he be like, but I just learned, I just met you two minutes ago. I don't read you jumping off a cliff. And I'm like, I thought we were both feeling this thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, so hello wasn't enough for you? No. So we're uh-uh. not in love. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. So <laughs> I have to... Help myself. <laughs> I gotta help myself be better. And um, actually, no, forget that. This is where I'm at, Brittany. Mm-hmm, Watch mm-hmm. this. I'm hard now, right? Mm-hmm. I mean that. Like one thing, I was, I'm talking to the gentleman, right? I like this guy. I like this guy, Brittany. Oh, already, I like this guy. You want to talk about it? Because I do. Let's go. Okay, let me tell you, right? Girl, let me tell you, you want to know what yes, I like? Yes. I like this guy, right? And he probably ain't the one. I don't know. But I like this guy. Let me tell you. So, he he's so nice. Mm-hmm. He is so kind to mm-hmm. me. Right? And, and gentle nature. It's very authentic. It's not um, something he's putting on. You can tell it's 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 who he is on a day to day basis. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very matter of fact, very assertive, very different than I am. He's more quiet than I am, as you can tell. <laughs> he's more like, mm. you know, it's a, it's a great vibe. It's a great thing, and I have no problem being myself. But the other part. I don't know who that is. Sorry about that. Um, The other part is the whole time, though, I'm watching it like a movie. Mm. I ain't never been like that. I'd normally be in the movie. I'll be like, oh, my God. This time I'm like, that was very nice. This is a good part of the movie. Oh, this is about to go bad. Yo, change that script. Yeah, that's about to go bad. <laughs> and I'm watching the movie. I've never been outside in. And that new space is different for me mm-hmm. to like actually pace myself. I've never done that. Mm-hmm. I've never been conscious of how my heart is turning and yeah. then saying too much. Back up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I've never done. I've always let it go freely. Mm-hmm. However, it's about to go. Oh, I'm falling. <gasps> I'm falling. I'm alone. <laughs> you know. Yes. Now I'll be like, I'm running. You ever seen The Incredibles? Mm-hmm. Okay, I got kids. So, uh, the, the fast uh-huh. one when he was on the track, <laughs> he was going fast. It was like, yo, slow down, slow down. But they know you got superpowers. Mm-hmm. I will go fast. My oh, we going slow. Now I'm like, okay, so we're going slow. Mm-hmm. or, And it's a new space for me. I'm scared. Yeah. Can we normalize that going through traumatic relationships can definitely leave you with PTSD, which means that I can become hypervigilant. And sometimes going slow is really me just looking for the next bomb. Yeah. Okay, and That's I say that. Me. Because you're not going slow with the intention of let me experience this person. Let me get to know them. You clearly said, this is about to go bad. Let me change the script. You're looking for bombs. Yes. Right. And I say bombs because I work with military veterans. That's the language. (laughs) Right. But when you become hypervigilant, I'm looking for where's the next tragic moment going to come from. I'm bracing myself for that. And slowing down is a good thing but you're still looking for what's going to hurt me, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay to be aware of the ways in which someone can hurt me, but when I start creating that vision, when I start creating that scenario, when I start living that out, your body responds to what your image you're creating in your head, not what he's provoking. Because the same way me and you could be talking to the same guy and I'm like, I'm excited about what this is, and you're like, I'm afraid of him hurting me. Same guy, two different perspectives, two different outcomes, Mm -hmm. right? Again, we don't know what this Mm -hmm. is going to be. We want it to work out well, right? But at the end of the day, is Jessica going to be okay whether this doesn't work out or not? Right now, because of the space I am, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's also because of where it's rooted. Mm -hmm. Why is it yes? Mm Mm-hmm. 
because my yes is like, no, I'm not about to get hurt no more. Right, because I've already, I've, I've only let him come so close. Yes, mm-hmm. and so, um, what I've also realized is my vulnerability is a language I speak daily. Mm-hmm. And so for a person who isn't used to somebody being transparent, I'm standing out. Mm-hmm. But it, you're not getting access. Mm-hmm. I have other places you do not know about that I don't tell nobody because it's gentle. Mm-hmm. And where you think I'm talking from a tender place, no, I actually talk like this. Mm-hmm. I don't mind telling you this stuff. This is healing for me. Mm. But these this area over here, nah, because I've done that and this ain't going to work. And, you know, one, um, like the previous episode, I am getting my mind to start to talk different about things outside myself. Mm-hmm. Now, Jessica Reedy alone, I have encouraged her. I have let her know, no, you worthy. Mm-hmm. You can and you will. You got this. Now you start adding people in. Now I'm like, I know you can, Jessica. I don't know if they can. So what are we doing? Mm-hmm. That's the new language I want to learn. That's the new language I want to make a habit. Yeah. You know, incorporating that same positive outlook. On even the additions, not just myself. Mm-hmm. But no, you just came in my life. This is gonna go great. I can't lose here. Mm-hmm. Cause with you, this is wonderful. If we depart, that was great. You know, it's like I got what I needed from it. Mm-hmm. And and having having that as a normal is what I'm trying to master. Mm-hmm. How do I I asked Doc Little about this. How do I master that? How do I get that in? Like like how I am about me now. Mm-hmm. I don't need anybody to tell me how beautiful I am. Mm-hmm. I believe it now. I just believe it. I never believed it in my life. And now I know I am. I don't need anybody to validate my personality. Mm-hmm. I like me. I'm different, I'm strange, I'm quirky, whatever. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's me. I like Jessica. But people, um, I don't know how to migrate back in. What is your fear? Rejection. Mm -hmm. Alone, oh my gosh, I'm about to cry again. Come on. Alone with my children. With the friends that I've been able to choose this time, they accept me. Mm-hmm. They like me, and that's why we're around each other. They get me. Mm-hmm. I'm safe, finally. Mm-hmm. I feel safe. Now, anybody else? Anybody else? It's like, uh uh-uh. uh. Mm-hmm. And it's not fair. To me, it's not fair to them because I have so much to offer. And they have so much unknown to offer. But I've spent so many years misunderstood and trying to, I spent the season proving myself. Mm -hmm. And then I went through the season of people pleasing. And then I went through the season of anger Mm -hmm. and forget y'all. Then I went through alone. Then I was able to like pick people that actually wanted me to pick them. Right. And now I don't know how to migrate back into society. Mm -hmm. How can someone reject what you've already approved? I think sometimes we miss the fact that the only way someone's rejection hurts is if on some level I agree. Right. I, when I stand 10 toes down in who I am and everything that you love about yourself, somebody else can walk in and say, "Mm, not my cup of tea. You could be, you could be shorter. You could be, you could be, you know, bigger. You could be smaller. You could be lighter. You could be darker. Everybody has an opinion on who they think you should be. But when I've accepted everything that I am, I say, oh, well, 
Thank you for your, your unsolicited opinion. Enjoy the rest of your day. You should probably unfollow me. You should probably block my number. You should probably find another friend because I'm not yours, right? Becoming unapologetic in your self-expression and really loving everything that you are, I am accepting that everybody can't come. I'm accepting that everybody ain't for me. I, I give you permission. I tell people all the time, I'm giving you permission to de- decline my request for friendship, for, for, for a romance relationship, for, for a friendship, for a job. Decline if you feel that I am too much or too little for what it is you have going on. Because I would rather have me. And I have fought too hard and too long to love everything that comes with me for your opinion to set me back. This is so good. A lot of people are afraid of rejection because if you reject me, it means I have to release you. And we, many times in childhood, unfortunately in our family systems, what was what was rooted into us is that because we loved and valued our family, we held on to them despite the fact that they didn't love us appropriately, despite the fact that they rejected certain parts of us, despite the fact that they tried to change certain parts of us. So the cycle that we were living as adults was, even when you reject me, I just try harder. But what if my new healed response to rejection is to release? Hmm. That's a decision I get to make. That's the only thing I control in this equation. I have always had a problem with letting go. Mm. When, um, because growing up, my um, I was bullied, and I was forced to be alone mm. because I was the tallest, and I I developed quick, and I was very smart. And I was very pretty. And I was rejected. And so I was I was told the opposite of what I was by people who didn't look like me. So that they could feel better about how they were. And then I accepted it. And then my father was murdered and he was the only person mm. that loved me. That protected me from mm-hmm. stuff. And so I was unprotected moving forward. Right. So I was exposed to molestation and different things. I was exposed to, you know, different things. And it caused me to have to become a certain kind of way to be accepted. And then God shined his light on me. Mm -hmm. And from middle school, on up, I was always special. Right. You know, people could notice it. They could recognize it. They saw it. And I stood out Mm. and I drew people and people would just come, you know. And so those who I loved, who I knew loved me, they paid attention to that. And then they made me a poster child. Mm. So now I had to look apart and I had to sit away and I had to dress a certain way and I had to speak a certain way. Yeah. And I was still trying to accept the pain. And I I wasn't given safe space to properly decipher my feelings about things. Mm-hmm. And it trickled into how I chose my relationships. And I ended up with abusers mm-hmm. who took advantage of the light they saw for their own personal gain. Mm -hmm. And all I wanted was love. Yeah. And so now it's like, I don't found a voice, you know? And I I speak to myself and I say, no, you all right. You doing great. You know, and I've been through a lot. And I say, you, I'm proud of you, you know, and I build my children up and I say, we doing great y'all. Look at us, look, 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 we are doing awesome. I love us, you know, and it makes me now, so I ain't taking no stuff. Yeah. But a part of that is too heavy. I'm light, you know, I love love. And this new, 
I don't want all that. Mm. But it's here. It it's it helps the encouraging part, but it also speaks a different language in love. Mm-hmm. It speaks beware instead of you all right. Yeah. You know, and I don't wanna um I don't want the rejection, but then I'm also okay with it. Mm-hmm. I don't want nobody around that shouldn't be. Yeah. But then it's like, but if you don't came to me, maybe you're supposed to be in my life. Maybe you don't know you're supposed to be. And I start going back into mm-hmm. that proving myself. Yeah. What I'm hearing is that for you, rejection rejection can have layers. And when you have childhood trauma, especially anything related to molestation, there's a level of shame that you run away from for the rest of your life, right? When I go through traumatic events that shapes the way where I was devalued, that desire to overcompensate and prove myself as I'm trying to prove them wrong, that I was a value from the beginning, right? So the rejection speaks a language now that says, see, told you you weren't nothing. I told you this is why they were able to take advantage because you weren't, you didn't have value from the beginning. So rejection is no longer people not approving of me. Rejection, every time a new person rejects me, it feels like it's evidence as to why I wasn't enough. You have to learn that about yourself because your response to rejection will be very different from someone who has a different history than you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Moving forward, knowing that. So knowing myself, this is why I say when I accept everything I am, I accept good, bad, and ugly. So that means I even, I even accept the way that I internalize situations because of my trauma, right? Don't like it. Wish it was different, but it's me. So I accept it. So accepting that that, that rejection speaks a certain language to you, you know how to fix it because I'm not trying to get your approval. I'm trying to get proof that I was worthy from the beginning. And I've got to know that about myself so that when I start to go into these overcompensating behaviors, I can have a very candid conversation with myself to say, okay, now is this coming from a pure place or are you trying to prove something to your abusers? Are you trying to prove something to mama or daddy or the person who wasn't there for you? Who are you trying to prove? Because this this ain't got nothing to do with this new relationship. Who are you still trying to prove it to? And that's when I can have a conversation with myself to say, you're enough as is. You were enough from day one. So that I can separate my current situation from the way in which my past situation is affecting how I'm showing up today. Does that make sense? Mm Mm-hmm. You've got to speak to the part of you that day to day, every day is going to continue to still be healing from what happened. Because it doesn't go away. Your body will always remember it. It'll always be a part of you. Loving myself means I stop hiding in shame as if that part doesn't exist. And this is why loving relation, romantic relationships are hard because that level of intimacy means you've got to see all of me. And what if I'm still ashamed of that one part? Does that make sense? That makes sense. This is so good. <laughs> this is so good. Thank you. I um I I didn't I didn't openly confess that. But it's always been a value thing. Yeah. A worth thing. Yeah. I recently had a situation with a loved one of mine and I did everything for her. She was sick. And whenever she's sick, I'm there. Mm. And I'm the only one there. And while she was drugged up from the medications, another relative showed up and she looked that this relative who ain't there when she said and said, I trust you to take care of me. Mm. Jessica, I don't trust you. You could hurt me. You, know, you, I, you probably, uh, I believe you would roll me in the corner and leave mm. me there. 
And she gave this other relative all of the accolades that I had deserved but never asked for. Right. But to hear her have the capability to compliment, to acknowledge, and to never have acknowledged all these years, and even the present moment, it set me back. Mm. This was recent. It set me back. I said, I feel like a little kid. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. And then the new thing was, oh, you getting ready to run like you always do. I'm like, oh, I don't run. And that's when my other voice said, no, I don't run. I leave people who cause me pain. This is painful. <laughs> I'm not going to stay yeah. here in this pain. Right. This is painful. And but it it set something off. Mhm. It set something off and I uh I didn't know. I think that's why I've been crying as much. I didn't know what it set off until you just said it again. The value thing. Yeah. Wanting to be worth something to somebody. Yep. After years of being told I ain't worth nothing. You know, that's a lot. And I don't I don't want to be in denial about that portion. Mm-hmm. About that's a real thing. And I've always used this as I just want love. I just want it to be love. No, I really wanted my love to come in the form of value mm-hmm. that you see me yeah. as worth and worthy. Like, do you see yeah. that I'm special? Mm-hmm. I feel special. I know I'm special. I can feel it. It's all over my body. But can you see it? You know, I found little Little ways all my life I've said people can't see me. Yeah. I'll say stuff like that, you know. But it's really a value thing. It's really, that's what it is. And this is why when you have that type of wound, sometimes we misinterpret kind behaviors as someone seeing my worth and my value. Right? Because you're, you're, you have the language that you're speaking is that love. I want someone to love me. So when someone treats you in a loving manner, you equate that to, ooh, they see my value, which is not always true. This is true. Not always true. Right. And that's, that's why we can, our past can get us tripped up on who we pick to be in loving yeah. relationships with yeah. because I misinterpreted the behavior based on the definition that I attached to it. Yeah. This is why it's, it's imperative. Like I tell people you have to sit down with a therapist to help unwind these things because you don't even realize how you've defined certain words in ways that were shaped by your trauma in your past that are not based on reality. Right. I think for you to even make that connection that you looking for someone to see your value and see your worth, you've got to know that that's going to always be your thing. That's going to always be your thing. Um, And when I say your thing, I'm saying that that's going to be the trigger for you, right? That's going to be the thing that scares you. That's going to be the thing that makes you happy. That's going to be the thing that makes you fall in love. That's going to be your thing, right? I have to monitor that thing. (laughs) Um, Certain therapists, um, teach attachment styles, right? Because that is going to deeply impact how you attach yourself to other people and who you let attach to you based on how they make you feel when you feel seen by them. The biggest thing is knowing that that's something that I need in a relationship. It's not a want, it's not a desire, but if I'm going to be in a, in any type of long-term relationship with someone, I need to make sure that they see me. More than more than them being nice, more than them being chivalrous, more than them giving me compliments or buying me gifts. What my need is, is to know that this man sees me and not just the parts of me that I show. But also the parts that I don't speak about, also the parts when I'm trying to save face, also the parts when I'm trying to be strong and I feel so weak. Can you see me when I'm hurting? And then do you see me enough to want to do something about it? And I think that when you have learned how to be your own savior, 
the hardest thing is allowing somebody to come in and save you. And that, when you talk about that anxious feeling you get with this new connection, is the fear of if I show this person all of me and they see it, are they going to like it enough to say, I got you? Loving myself says, and I, I'm telling you, I do this to myself all the time, Brittany, you deserve, you deserve a love that says, I got you. You deserve a love that says, even, even on your worst day, you're worthy. You deserve a love that says, e- even in your worst moment, on your worst behavior, I see your value, I see your hurt, I see your pain, and it doesn't subtract from your value. That's when we're going to know that we got something. That's when we're going to know we have a connection. But I have to be courageous enough to let somebody see it. And that's my part in the connection process is to do the work I have to do so that I can muster up the courage to say, look at me. I want you to like it, but if you don't, we cool. I'm going to take it to Jesus and I'm going to figure it out. I want you to like it, but if you don't, it's not going to break me this time. It's not going to break me this time. Because this time I was built on a real foundation. And that's what you have to trust is that as you're rebuilding who you are now, who you are today was built on a real foundation. Not the one that you made up out of hurt, pain, and trauma. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I don't think we bargained for that whole conversation today. <laughs> I um <clears throat> I wanted to to have this transparent conversation openly. Mm-hmm. Um because and I'm a private person when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's not, nice. I don't, yeah, but I wanted, I wanted it to be filmed so that other people can take courage. And so my inner self can too. Because mm-hmm. there's no other way I would have done it. Yeah. The, yeah. the meetings I have with myself. They go a little different. Mm-hmm. But when I have to hear it out loud and I have to say it, you know, or I have to be held accountable for it, this is the truth, Jessica. Mm-hmm. Don't hide from that. Yeah. You know, I don't talk about some of the stuff that happened to me, Yeah, you know, as a kid. But it don't go away. You know, I live with it. I live with the results of it. You know, how I feel about certain things that nobody knows I'm thinking based off of things that happened to, you know, growing up. And I wanted to, I wanted to do this for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I cry by myself. Mm -hmm. I think about it. Yeah. And I I hope my, my little girl self... I said, that was bad what happened to you. That was a lot. You've been through a lot. (laughs) But I'm I'm happy to be on this journey. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm happy you're part of it. You know, because I've never been this person. Yeah. I've never been this person before. She's somebody I wanted to be. I wondered if I ever would be. So I'm very proud of myself. Mm-hmm. I am. Uh, I really am. I think that it is imperative that us as a community see therapists. Mm-hmm. I I thought it, but now I know it's significant. It's it it, it's different. It's a different kind of thing you got going on here. I don't know how you did it. It's like I'm getting done. It's like, you know, I'm getting, Just, I'm getting done. <laughs> and, and I think um, 
it happens in the time that it needs to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't say that if we would have had this conversation three months ago, a year ago, that this would have been the same result. You have to be in a certain place of readiness. Mm -hmm. And and as painful as that situation was that you feel set you back, I do believe that God tills soil, right? The minute I think I'm good and God goes, okay, let me put you in this situation to show you, (laughs) you still have more healing to do, right? In this area. So, you know, trusting the process means that trusting, even when I have my set, what I feel is a setback, that it's really, it's like going into the gym and getting on that treadmill because I got a vision for abs, right? (laughs) But those situations are preparing you and it's giving you the opportunity, close this door, close this door, right? As a a person who comes from, you know, a semi-toxic family. That's putting it mildly because <laughs> we on camera. But I, I know very well what it feels like to have to close doors or sacrifice who I was becoming. That I had to come up with a new definition of what family was, that I had to allow myself to grieve the, the family connections that I thought I deserved because my reality was not the same. So I know the pain that comes with having to close a door so that I can truly evolve into this next version of me, right? It never gets easy. It never feels good. It can be a very confusing place, but it all goes back. Everything I ever speak about always goes back to self-love. For for the longest part of my journey, I just kept, my, my mantra was, I love you enough too. And I would fill in the blank with whatever that thing was, whatever that hard thing was. If it was eating right, if it was going to the gym, if it was blocking a number, if it wasn't going to the family Thanksgiving dinner, if it wasn't having a conversation, I love you enough to protect you the way that so-and-so didn't protect you. I love you enough to love you the way they didn't love you. I love you enough to be here when they abandoned you. What they did not do, I'm coming to correct it for you. That's the conversation I have with me every time I have to do something that's scary that, that forces me to grow into the next version of me. I'm doing this because I love you enough to give you the best life that I can give you. In the same way you show up for your boys, that's how you show up for baby Jessica. Yeah. I love you enough to do these scary things to give you what you've never had. Yeah. Wow. Dr. Brittany. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> Listen. I am I'm Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome. This has been um extremely powerful and um a necessary moment. Um as you heard me reference the previous episode. It's all been purpose and necessary. I don't know where you are on your journey. Um, and as Doc Brittany just said, when 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 you know, you'll know when you need to talk to somebody, you'll know. But it it's time for me. It's my turn to do it. Um, you hear it all day. You need a therapist. You need a therapist. I felt it was time to have... Bring some doctors on the show and um, have someone to talk to about the things that you've learned to cope with. Wherever you are and whatever you've been through, there is no way you can tell my story by how I look or from my smile. There is no way. But if I told you things, you wouldn't believe them. So... When it's your turn, and maybe it might be now, especially since you're watching this episode, go ahead and book your therapist. Go ahead and do it. Get, let's just do it all together and hold each other accountable. Let's heal so that we can be loved properly, be okay with ourselves. And, you know, thank you. This has been a blessing. You know, I I talk to my little girl all the time, little Jessica. I comfort her all the time. She's been scared. She's been through some scary stuff. 
And I talk to her all the time, you know. But to feel understood in the matter is a new experience. Um, and that's nice. That felt good. That felt like I was valued. And I actually took that as love. So that healed me. That helped me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for being a part of this episode. Um, it is my hope that we become more transparent and more open to being vulnerable and more trustworthy with one another, more compassionate, more graceful, more patient, more considerate with our words. Because we have all been through some things. Yeah. The dash is something else. It reads a lot. Uh, so, yeah. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hello, hubby. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. I love you. <laughs>